Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, I will be doing a review of the Kitchen Boss sous vide system. A little over a month ago, I was contacted by a company called Kitchen Boss, and they asked me if I wanted to do a paid promotion for their sous vide unit. And I said no, because I don't do paid promotions. But I told them, if you believe enough in your product that you're willing to subject it to an honest review, send me one, and I'll give it an honest review. Even then, I was a little bit reluctant, as I already have two other sous vide units, and I'll talk about those in a second. But first, I want to talk about what sous vide is and why I love it. When I first started cooking sous vide about eight years ago, very, very few people knew what it was. I found that I pretty much had to explain it to everyone. Now, in 2021, I think a lot more people know about it, both because of the various cooking shows that you see it used on and the fact that it's become far more consumer friendly in terms of price. When I started looking at sous vide, the main player was PolyScience and they had these ginormous immersion circulators that you'd put in a great big Dura tub. I think they were probably $1,600, $2,000, maybe even more back then. And then sous vide Supreme released a unit, this one right here, and it was right around 400, maybe a little bit more. And then a handful of years ago, I was part of the Kickstarter effort for the Jewel, which was created by Chef Steps. So I feel sort of a personal connection to this, but I'll talk about both of these as part of the review for the Kitchen Boss. Sous vide is French for under vacuum. It is a method of cooking where you vacuum seal whatever it is you plan to cook, your protein, your vegetable, whatever, and then you cook it in a controlled temperature environment, a water bath. In terms of cooking sous vide, there are a handful of advantages to it. I think the one that means the most to me is that consistent cooking temperature, edge to edge on a piece of meat, especially a steak. So if you are grilling a steak, for example, and you like your steak medium rare, which I do, so I like it right around 130 degrees Fahrenheit at the center. Well, by the time you reach 130 Fahrenheit in the center, you've got about 40% of your steak that's well done because you're cooking outside in. With sous vide, it is 130 edge to edge, and then you finish it on some hot cast iron or with a blowtorch. Also, it is very difficult to overcook something in sous vide. So if you wanna have a protein prepped and ready so that all you need to do is finish it on the cast iron or with a blowtorch, you can have it sitting around pretty much for hours held at that consistent temperature. Sous vide also allows you to cook very delicate items as well at a perfect temperature. Carrots, for example. You can cook carrots to the point that it starts pulling that sweetness out of them without them getting all soft and mushy. That's just one example. Sous vide egg bites. You know, Starbucks sells these. That's another thing that you can do. You can also make custards. You can do low temperature pasteurization. A lot of cool stuff with sous vide. And we're gonna try out some of those with the Kitchen Boss. Now, as I said, I already have the sous vide Supreme. I love it. It's sort of like your first car or your first kiss. You have a special place in your heart for it. But it's big, it's bulky. It's not the sort of thing that you want out on your counter or potentially even taking up cabinet space. Price-wise, still pretty close to $400. Like I said, I love the Jewel, and I believe America's Test Kitchen rated this as their favorite last year for home immersion circulators. The downside to the Jewel not so much for me, but for my family, is that you can only control it through an app. So you download an app on your iPhone or Android device, and you're able to control your Jewel. My wife, she's not that into technology. For her, that is a turnoff. My mother-in-law, probably the same story. So what intrigued me about the Kitchen Boss is that it has a menu for picking whatever food or whatever recipe you wanna create right on a little screen on the unit itself. Secondly, based on the pictures I saw of it on Amazon, it looks like it's a very sturdy construction. And it's 1100 watts, which means it ought to heat up pretty quickly. Finally, price-wise, pretty consumer friendly, sort of towards the bottom of the scale in terms of price at around $150. But now it's time, as Elvis said, for a little less conversation, a little more action. Let's unbox this thing. Here we have it. 
flip it upside down. All right, we have a nice felt storage bag, kind of classy. Some vacuum sealer bags, assuming you already have like a food saver or something. The instruction manual. Oh, I like this. It's got the Velcro for the cable. It's a little thing, but I think it's a nice touch. This is a fairly hefty unit here. Pretty sizable, stainless steel. It, uh, it does not feel cheap. And then we've got this mounting ring so that we can mount it on the side of the pot or whatever vessel we are cooking in. The bottom part of the unit, the submersible part, is labeled with the minimum and maximum fill lines. Doesn't seem like there's a, a huge difference between the two. And I suspect that uh, the main purpose of this ring here is so that we can control the depth of our sous vide unit in our cooking vessel. Bottom part comes off very easily in case we need to do any sort of cleaning of the circulator or the heating element. I'm not much for reading instructions, so we're just gonna jump right in and take a look at this. I plugged it in, immediately the screen came up. There are a number of preset recipes in this. We have steak, 134 Fahrenheit, that's higher than I'd go. I'll have to see later if I can change this to Celsius as well. We've got lobster, tuna, chicken breast, lamb chop, egg, vegetables, salmon, Asparagus, I guess that's different than vegetables. Pork chop, that looks like ham to me. Not so much a pork chop. Prawns, chicken leg, sausages, duck meat, and bacon block, uh, whatever that is. And then there are three, four, five customized settings that you can do if you have a particular recipe that you like. Let's go back to steak though. Now for the steak, they've got this set a little bit warmer than I like mine. So I'm gonna hit set and rotate my knob here. We'll take her down to 130. Press the center, oops, that's apparently not what I wanna do. Clicking the center appears to set some sort of a lengthy countdown timer. So we hit set, got the temperature set. Then we have the cook time, which we can adjust in one minute increments. And then let's see what happens. If I try and start it. Ah, good. It aired out. Nice, nice safety feature there. Also, if you hold down the set button, you can go into setup, turn on buzzer, on or off, change the language, and as I was interested in finding out before, you can in fact change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. For the first test I'm gonna put the kitchen boss through, I am gonna see how long it takes to heat up four quarts of cold water, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am right in the middle of the minimum and maximum fill lines. So while I probably don't need this bracket, I'm still gonna use it just to keep this thing stable in the water. Well, this does elevate it a little bit, but we're still above the minimum line, so we'll be fine. But it's good to know that this thing is large enough that it will probably work with about any size Duratub or pot that you may be cooking in. So I'm turning this back on. We'll set it to that 130 for a steak and start. I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on camera, but the thermometer is incrementing up. The timer has not started yet. It'll be interesting to see if this starts right when this hits 130 or if there's something that I need to do as the user. All right, it's at 129 and it's beeping, so it's, and the counter has started. So that was just a little less than nine minutes and 30 seconds. Now I'm seeing a little bit of temperature variation there, 130.3, kind of holding, 130.1. Let's check the temperature. One twenty nine, one thirty, pretty much spot on. 
Now, while I was doing that water heating experiment, I also looked up a few things. First off, you can set a delay timer on this up to, I believe, 99 hours. Now, I certainly don't know why you'd want to do 99 hours, but I could see a situation where maybe you come home from work at lunch and you get your sous vide prepped, you get your protein in the water, and you set a delay timer for three or four hours, and then you have it start. Kind of a neat feature. Additionally, the temperature range that you can operate goes anywhere from 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 Fahrenheit, to 90 degrees Celsius, which is 194 Fahrenheit. So a pretty significant range that you can operate this in. So far, there's only been one thing that has mildly disappointed me about this unit. For such a sturdy unit, there's just there's a tiny little bit of play on the knob. You know, left and right and up and down. Not a game breaker, but it's worth pointing out. Now, for the sake of comparison, I am going to do that exact same experiment using the Jewel. All right, our water, a little bit colder. 60, 61 Fahrenheit. We'll try and take that into account as we do the preheat. The Jewel's clip is a fixed clip, so you can't control the submersion depth. We'll fire up the Jewel app, hit start, till it's 130 degrees. Now, one of the things that I notice immediately, and I never noticed it before about the Jewel until using that Kitchen Boss, the Jewel makes some noise. That Kitchen Boss, that was really quiet, but I think you can probably hear the difference. You can really hear that fan moving around. Okay, my camera was having a really difficult time showing you that on the phone, but it took about 10 minutes and, oh, let me stop this. About 10 minutes and 20 seconds, if I were guessing, to come up to temperature. So a smidge longer, even accounting for that three to four degree difference in temperature. In terms of the reading on our thermal pen, 130. And honestly, I would expect nothing less from a product that got America's Test Kitchen's best rating. So in terms of performance, the Jewel versus the Kitchen Boss. The Kitchen Boss definitely seemed to get that water moving around a little bit more, and it got up to temperature a little bit faster. However, there was a tiny little bit, you know, about a degree worth of variability in terms of temperature. Furthermore, the Kitchen Boss was noticeably quieter. The Jewel certainly seemed to be a little bit more consistent on the temperature reading. I didn't see that little bit of fluctuation, and according to the people at America's Test Kitchen, they only saw like one-tenth of one degree Fahrenheit in variation. The Jewel is noticeably smaller than the Kitchen Boss, so that may be an advantage might fit easier in just a regular kitchen drawer. I don't love that the mounting bracket on the Jewel is in a fixed position. I didn't think it would really matter to me until I saw that I could raise this one up and down. That could definitely come in handy. Now, if the kitchen boss had not performed comparably to the Jewel on that test, which it did, this review would be over. I would be sticking with the Jewel. But so far, I'm seeing enough out of this that I like it. The next thing I'm gonna do is test it on some food. For our sous vide cooking test, I'm gonna do eggs two ways simultaneously. I'm gonna make scrambled eggs and I'm gonna to attempt to make poached eggs. Now I say attempt because I have never been successful at doing this. So if I'm gonna fail, might as well fail on camera. And then if one of you have been successful, you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. I've got both farm fresh and some organic free range eggs. I'll use two of each for the scrambled and one of each for a sous vide poached egg. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but you should see the yolk on this farm fresh egg. So big, so golden. Same with that one. I also like to add a splash of heavy whipping cream. I don't know, two tablespoons maybe. Then I will whisk this up with my pogo whisk. I will link to this in the description. It is so awesome. Then I'll transfer this to a one quart Ziploc bag. Then to remove any air in the bag, you can either do a water displacement method, which is where you put the whole bag inside your sous vide vessel and let the water push the air out. I'm just gonna use the edge of my booze board here. If 
find that's just as effective and a little bit more tidy. For these eggs, I'm going to use one of the personalized settings. We'll set the temperature up to 167 Fahrenheit. Oops, overshot. And we're going to set the time down to 30 minutes. Oh, it seems that this uh, spinner has a little bit of a, an accelerometer on it. So the faster you turn, you don't necessarily need to increment by just one tenth of a degree or one minute. So that's kind of cool. And we'll let this preheat. Our water is ready, but I forgot to add a tablespoon of butter to my eggs. So I'm going to throw that into the Ziploc bag, get the air out, and then we're going to start cooking. So our eggs go into our Cambro container. And then I'm going to add my two that I'm going to try and poach. Now while our eggs cook, I'm going to head outside to my garden and get some fresh chives. At the 10 minute mark, we'll pull this out and massage it. It is going to be fairly hot, so I recommend using something like these little silicon, was it Mr. Crabs from the Krusty Crab? They're actually from Instant Pot. So we'll just squish this around a little bit. And back in. Now supposedly these poached eggs are supposed to be done at about 13 and a half minutes, which is where we're at right now. So I'm going to fish these out. I'm going to put each one of these into an ice bath just briefly. It should help them peel more easily. So that farm egg, not exactly what I'm looking for in a poached egg. The white's still very runny. Now our other egg, that one actually came out, that looks fairly poached. The white is fairly firm. The yolk, kind of a, almost a jam consistency. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the stove top for my poached eggs. But if you've done poached eggs successfully and consistently sous vide, I'd love to hear what your method is. Let me know down in the comments below. We are at the 20 minute mark. So we'll take our eggs out again, give them a little massage. We'll squeegee this top egg back down into the rest and 10 more minutes. We have hit the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to remove my eggs, set this out of the way. Transfer the eggs to a bowl. These appear to be very delicate, kind of similar to French style scrambled eggs. And then we'll add some of our chives. And now the taste test. Oh my, so creamy. These are so crazy creamy, you would think that there was like cream cheese or something melted into it. Now, I've got someone else in this house that likes scrambled eggs. Let's see what he thinks. Oh, Colton, you want to have some scrambled eggs? You want some scrambled eggs? I think I an egg. What do you think? Do you like those? Do you want more? What do you think? No, thank you. No, thank you? Oh, okay. Dear, did you want to try a bite? Yes. Okay. Mm. Really creamy, very creamy. Now, while those sous vide scrambled eggs are super rich and super creamy and really yummy, I don't know that it's necessarily something I would do that often. To get that same sort of consistency on the stovetop, you pretty much need a double boiler. I know that both Heston Blumenthal uses that methodology and Michael Ruhlman also talks about it in his book, Egg. But in my opinion, sous vide eggs, unless I can figure out a foolproof way to do the poached eggs, um, it's just not, it's not the best use of sous vide. But nevertheless, it passed the test for this review. One of my favorite uses for sous vide and I think a lot of people overlook this, is its ability to reheat food items, especially those that you wanna keep moist and tender. So when I'm bulk cooking, especially something on the smoker, I will take any sort of leftovers and I will portion them out and I will freeze them for future meals. 
Now this could be something like pulled pork, it could be carnitas. I've even done enchiladas that I have frozen and then reheated sous vide. But for this video, I've got about a half rack of ribs right here. The cool thing is, I can go straight from the freezer into the water bath before I even turn on the immersion circulator. So again, I'm gonna use one of my personalized settings and I'm gonna go all the way to the top temperature that this thing can do, 194. Because 190 to 200 Fahrenheit is where the collagen really starts to break down in ribs. They weren't super tender when I first made them because it was a Myron Mixon recipe for competition ribs, which tend to be not quite so tender. I'm gonna set the timer to four hours and we'll drop in our ribs. Our ribs are done. Oh wow, talk about tender, they just rip apart. That was not the case with these ribs when I made them initially. Now I know some barbecue purists may say that's too tender, but I'm not one of those people. So we know it's super tender, let's see how it tastes. <sighs> Smells great. That is just unbelievably tender. So for me, steak is still my number one favorite thing sous vide, but the second best is reheating tender proteins, especially barbecue. Oh, so good. But the next thing I am gonna do is my favorite thing, which is make steak. For the final test of the Kitchen Boss sous vide system, we're gonna unbox their vacuum sealer and sous vide some steak. All right, once again, we have one of these nice felt storage bags. We have a selection of vacuum sealer bags, different sizes. Hmm, I'm not sure what this is yet. We have what appears to be an external vacuum tube, the manual, and the unit itself. Now this is fairly compact, and uh, see the power cable tucks up inside. So I guess this here is a replacement gasket. Nice. All right, we have a protective film here over the sealer. Take that off. Now, in terms of the features, it's got inching, which I had to look up in the instruction manual. That allows you to manually control the pressure so you don't over vacuum something and smush something delicate. There's a dry vac, a moist vac, and then seal only. So I have here a filet of tenderloin. Let's see how this thing works. Close it, dry vac. When the red light is flashing, that means it's done, and you press the open button. All right, we got a good vacuum here. I do like that there's this little cavity in here so we can tuck away the cord. Put it in the bag, put it in a drawer. Can't say the same for my old food saver. We'll pop our steaks into the Cambro container here. I've got the temp set to 130. It says an hour and 22 minutes for the time. I'm gonna boost that because I want it to sync up with dinner. So we'll go up to two hours and away we go. After the steaks are done cooking sous vide, you still want to get that nice crust on it. So I typically use some ripping hot cast iron. Maybe, depending on the thickness of the steak, I may also hit the sides with a blowtorch. So I like to pat them dry because I want them to sear, not steam. And then I'm just going to dab them with a little bit of duck fat here. Get them onto some ripping hot cast iron, a little blowtorch on the side, and we're good to go. Medium rare. Pretty much edge to edge. Oh. Ready for some steak? Oh. Mm. Mm, steak good. Steak good? Yeah. 
So on the whole, I am very impressed with the Kitchen Boss sous vide system. The immersion circulator itself, very good construction. I am, I'm really kind of blown away with how rock solid that thing is. If I had any complaints, and both of these are kind of nitpicky. The first is there is that tiny little bit of play in the knob. Uh, just It just wiggles ever so slightly. And I think one of the reasons that it stands out so much to me is the rest of the unit is just so well built. The other little complaint is I would have liked to have seen a bit more variety in terms of the presets. One of the things I have not done with sous vide, but I've been told you can do, is temper chocolate. That one might have been nice. Or some sort of a custard or something like that. So a little more variety. Granted, you do have five presets that you can put in there for yourself. Now, the one thing that you can't answer with a brand new product is how well it will hold up over time. So if, as I use this, I have any issues, I will update the pinned comment on this video. In terms of the vacuum sealer, for a relatively inexpensive vacuum sealer, I'm pleased with that too. I love the size, the ease of use, I have had three Food Saver vacuum sealers. Each one of them has failed within about a year or two. They just quit creating a solid vacuum or started to fail at sealing. We'll see how the Kitchen Boss performs over time. Again, I will update the pinned comment down below if there are any issues with it. But even if it lasts the same amount of time as each one of my Food Savers, it's still like a third of the cost. So there you go. A lot of my viewers have requested that I do some sous vide videos, and I will from time to time, now probably using the Kitchen Boss, so you can look forward to those in the future. Anyhow, I hope you found this video helpful. I know it ran a little bit long, but if you liked it, click like. If you're not a subscriber, click subscribe, hit the bell, turn on all notifications. Thanks for watching.